Hello again folks and welcome to Black Bear Outdoors. Today we're talking about Lee Enfield rifles and one in particular, but uh, they need no introduction. I mean, they've been the main battle rifle for the British and the Commonwealth since about 1895, all the way up to 1957. It's seen action in the Anglo-Boer War, where a small group of uh, farmer commandos took on the might of the, of the British Empire. It went through World War I, World War II, and any conflict you can think of uh, during that period of time. So there were millions of these rifles made. So what makes this one special? Well, before the military surplus purists lose their minds on me, let me explain. So in the country where uh, this is originally from, at the time, there was a law that prohibited you from owning a firearm that was able to take a bayonet. And it was seen as a weapon of war and it either had to be destroyed or altered. So this particular one was saved from the crusher uh, by being turned into a hunting rifle. Now, it is special to me for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it was given to me as a gift uh, and was the first rifle I owned. Uh, by uh, Mrs. Bear's dad and my father-in-law, uh, who is also the man who made this beautifully handcrafted stock that you currently see on it today. And we will give you a closer look at that. It is also the rifle that afforded me my very first hunting experience back in the day. And uh, yes, so it's very, very special to me. With its 104th birthday looming around the corner in 2021, we thought we'd share this rifle with you guys as well. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take it inside, we're going to take a closer look at it, and we'll show you a closer look at the stock that my father-in-law made. Um, and then we'll take it out to the range and see if uh, the old man still packs a punch. Stay tuned. All right, folks, now that we've got the end field on the table here, let's take a closer look at uh, what it's got. All right, guys, starting at the muzzle end, you'll see it's got a standard front side post there, and it is sporting a 24-inch barrel. This is still its original barrel. Uh, I hope you can see that. It says Cogswell and Harrison uh, made in Piccadilly, and it has the same uh, serial number that corresponds with the uh, receiver set there. You'll also notice it has this adjustable sight uh, for up to 2,000 meters, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, apparently they were able to do that. So coming onto the side of the rifle, you'll see it is a bolt action rifle. So uh, this one in particular is a cock and close. So in other words, if you uh, close up the bolt, it cocks the gun, right? Uh, now again, the direction we are firing in is safe. It has a 10 round detachable box magazine, right? So you'll see you can add 10 rounds of 303 Brit in this one. Uh, and bolt action rifles are not limited in their mag capacity like semi autos are in uh, Canada. Now you'll notice, uh, I hope you can see the markings here. Uh, this rifle says uh, GR, so that's who the king was, right? Then um, it says BSA. So BSA is um, Birmingham Small Arms and it was created in 1917 and it says um, SML, it's the SMLE which is the uh, short magazine Lee Enfield and it's a Mark III. So millions of them made but this one is mine. So the trigger I believe is still the original trigger. We'll see if we can show you what the trigger pull is like. So it's fairly heavy trigger pull and then it snaps, right? On this end you see you also have your safety selector which currently is on uh, fire and if you pull it back it's on safe so it's nice because it's sitting on your thumb there uh, when you're using the rifle for hunting purposes or target shooting or whatever um, and it has the number three marking on there as well so that's pretty much the long and the short of the features of the old Enfield but uh, let's give you guys a closer look at this uh, stock that my father-in-law made All right, folks, so let's take it out to the range and see if the old man still has what it takes. Stay tuned. All 
All right, folks, taking the Enfield out to the range, we know it prefers the 170 grain bullets. However, what we have on hand is the Cellier and Bellow 150 grain soft points, and that's what we'll be using today. Issue quite right now uh, in December 2020 is that uh, three or three rounds are about two bucks a pop, so it's not uh, inexpensive to shoot. We did have a bit of a sound malfunction on the range, so I apologize in advance for the poor sound quality there. However, our first task is to see if we can get a decent group at 100 yards. Let's see what happened. So the 303 Brit is a pretty powerful round and whatever is on the wrong side of the barrel is going to be in for a pretty bad day. So we decided just for fun uh, to take a stab at our half buried in the snow uh, 200 yard small steel plate. Let's see if we can hit it. So yeah, folks, there you have it. Final thoughts about this rifle. Uh, it is a beautiful piece of history. Um, it's a beautiful piece of my own history. And uh, I honestly love it. It's a fantastic uh, hunting rifle, uh, target shooting rifle, and uh, just super fun to shoot. Guys, if uh, you enjoyed our video or learned something new today, please give us a thumbs up, uh, leave us a comment, and hit that subscribe button on the next page. It's gonna look like a black bear badge. And uh, if you want to support us in getting more gear to review for you guys, there's also going to be a link to our Patreon page. You guys stay safe and we'll see you next time.